in the in our toolkit, we put together um, a six a six stage planning process. And the little diagram on that side shows that we think that workforce planning really needs to be a kind of cycle. It's not something you, that you can just develop a workforce plan and leave it. It's something that will grow and and develop and needs to be, you know, needs to go in line with other parts of your planning process like your business planning, your HR planning and so forth. So the process that, that we've developed starts with a section called getting started, which is exactly what you would expect from something getting started. It's looking at who you need to involve and how you involve them. Setting up basic things like What's the scope of your workforce plan? Are you going to start by workforce planning for one unit? Or are you going to do it for you know, one service? Are you going to do it as an organisation as a whole? Or are you going to work in partnership with other organisations? You know, so and also setting timescales. So basic kind of planning things that you would start at the beginning of any process. Secondly, the toolkit looks at context and drivers. And I think that's a, a really important stage. It's looking at where your organisation sits within the wider social services context. So what is going to affect your, your plans? As Derek said earlier on, we can't predict the future, but we can plan to sort of make things as good as possible. And so looking at the context and drivers, things like demographic change, how your workforce is likely to change, also looking at things like um, policy documents like the 21st Century Review, getting ideas where the general policy direction may well take you and thinking, well, what does this mean for my organisation and how can, how can I plan to, um, to make the most of the opportunities? Next is building a picture of, of your workforce. And um, as Maureen, Maureen mentioned earlier, it's, it's amazing how often we don't get that chance to sort of step back and think, what do we actually need? Or, you know, where are we now? Who needs to get registered? Who needs qualifications? Where are those skill gaps? So in building a picture of the workforce, um, the toolkit looks at how you can use um, training needs analysis, um, information from the core minimum data set to get a better picture of exactly where you are now, um, which can obviously, you know, form your baseline for for your plans. After working out where you are now, the next obvious step is to, to develop a vision for the future. And the toolkit looks at different techniques that you can use to think, well, where would my ideal future be for, for our organisation? Obviously, that's something you might want to, you probably want to develop collaboratively with all the people involved in your workforce planning um, project. And so there's Obviously, lots of different techniques, and again, it you know, really depends on your organisation, what fits for you, whether you want visioning days, um, looking, looking to the future to, to see where your ideal and where your realistic future will be. So keeping, keeping hold of the ideal and the visionary, um, as well as the sort of things that you maybe can't control so much, like funding. And then, um, just move on to this. This is one of my favourite pictures from the from the toolkit. I think somebody got inspired on a trip across the Tay Bridge or something. But this really shows after you've made your your you've got your vision for the future and you know where you are now. The key bit of workforce planning is really developing those plans to get you to your desired future. And in our working group, we really thought that there was kind of two main things that you can do to get that workforce of the future. Firstly, developing um, training and nurturing really your existing staff to get, to get them to where they need to be. Secondly, recruiting new staff to fill gaps or, and um, maybe increase your workforce. But both of these things really need to be underpinned by very good retention policies, looking after your staff and um, developing you know, policies to, to to get a happy staff and a happy workforce. <coughs> yeah. Over to you. <laughs> right. Putting the plan together. What we've looked at in the document is some very practical ways of putting a plan together. So I think we've put a document into everybody's packs, but uh, there, there is at the end of the pack um, just 
real guides about how you might actually, actually structure a plan, starting with the introduction and working through all the stages of it. An emphasis on this being a living document that you don't write this year, put on a shelf and leave, and that's the end of it. It is an ongoing process. It needs to involve your staff and your service users, and it needs to be constantly reviewed. It has to have evaluation built into it. It is no good having a plan which you're not evaluating at the same time, and looking at how effective that plan is being in improving not only your staff qualification rates and their skills, but the service to your service users and their satisfaction rates. Um, and the key points in the plan are pretty straightforward. You need to know what your workforce is. You need to know what you want of your service in the future and what it will look like. And you need an action plan about how to get there. That's what we've already said, I know, that it needs some reiterating, it needs some dreaming, it needs some reality, and it needs a lot of planning. So our key message is again, workforce planning can radically improve things, it greatly improves people's job satisfaction, and it helps to have great staff and keep them. And we've got great staff, haven't we, in the knowledge sector and in all our sectors. And we do want to keep them. We don't want to be losing them um, to, to less satisfactory jobs. They, they, um, and this is one of our tools. Um, I wanted to look just a little bit at the future. On our, I think we've got one more slide. Um, the, the voluntary sector is very much part of the whole involve them, um, but they haven't been part of the process. And, and uh, it would have been so much better if they had been. I don't like to make political points too much, but it's very important, I think, this, this working together and working in partnership. Um, the other thing, of course, that workforce planning does is it requires resources. It not only improves our use of resources, but it does require some planning for the planning, if you like, in that we must in order to involve, for example, staff groups and service users in the planning process, we need to resource that and put some resources aside. The end result is that we use our resources better. But it does, we, we do need to be thinking about how we do that. And on that note, I think we'll, um, we'll, we'll finish there.